Welcome back to the Starting Your Small Business series. I'm Steve Brady, the Executive Director at the Covation Center. And I'm Dave Larson, uh, Marketing Guru. <laughs> and we're, we're happy to be here. We're excited to be here talking about the second week of this Starting Your Small Business series. In this part, we're going to be talking about you. We're talking about you setting your vision and your goals as you move forward. Now, you may remember last week we talked about the value of the idea, how you need to have that big idea and you need to do the analysis. You need to do the work so you can get to the point where you can make a decision to take action. And uh, we, we enjoyed talking about that and sharing some of that yeah. last week. This week, as we talk about this, we're going to really, like I said, we're going to focus on starting to fill in that cloud as we start looking at you and what you're doing. Uh, now, first question we're going to deal with here is why are you starting a business? Now, you talked about this last week just a little bit. Yeah. You've been in the B2B or the business-to-business -business marketing world. Yes. What's driving you to starting a business, really focusing on people like us, the smaller businesses? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's more personal, frankly. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of the, the, the small micro businesses that I'm working with are touching customers and they're in the B2C sector. And to me, I... B2C is business to consumer. Correct business to consumer um, and, and that's where a lot of the micro businesses exist and to me it's interesting because they're touching you know the the customers directly uh, the, there's a there's a personal nature to their business that I, I think while there's some aspects of it in the b2b world you're still working with people in the b2b world uh, in b2c b2c businesses there's still uh, a personal you know relationship between business owner and customer a lot of these get to the question, why do you start a small business and what's in it for you? Now, some people are innovators and some people just want to share that innovation with the world. I've got, I've got a brand new mousetrap and I want to show you how great my mousetrap is. Um, other people love to do something. I love baking. Mm. I love pottery. I love artwork. And so I want to do that. Now we've worked with I don't come up with these examples just off the top of my head. We've worked with uh, businesses that they make artis artisanal pottery types of things, yeah. amazing products that they have, or they're artists, or they are restaurateurs, or they're programmers, and they're writing code, and that's their innovation, and they love sharing that with the world as they create these things. Now, there's some other aspects to this. We have as our last bullet on here, building independence, be independent or be your own boss. Now, there's a tension there. Um, I've I've run across a couple of people who start small businesses that they just don't have interpersonal skills. They probably <laughs> don't belong as a small business owner. And if that's you, I apologize, but you need to understand you a little bit here as we go forward with these sorts of conversations. The trick here is to ultimately know that when you're your own boss, you actually have everyone as your boss. But that said, some people want to just have a sense of control of their own destiny and they want to mm -hmm. own a business because they think owning a business in and of itself is a fun thing. And I, in fact, I know one person who's an entrepreneur has a, a, a cleaning business, home cleaning business. I can't remember if it's Molly Maids or one of those. And I had this person speak to my class and I asked the question, so what about the cleaning business attracted you that you wanted to be this? Um, have you always been a neat freak? if you will. Have you always had some sort of obsessive compulsive disorder that everything has to be clean and you want to share that with the world? And the response was, no, actually, I wanted to own a business. And I did the work. I did the analysis to find a business that had a relatively low barrier to entry and would allow me to hire people and have my own business for my own independence and my own security. So there's a lot of reasons why you would start a business. And we give you these examples to help you kind of figure out where you are. Why do you want to start your own business? Is it to travel, to have that independence, to be able to travel, to see the world, to be able to do what you do in different places? Or is it because you just want to be able to control the good coffee that you get every morning? All of which are very valid conversations. So then we get to what is your passion? You're passionate about marketing. Yep. Now what I be safe in assuming that your passion is in, in a sense working with people yes yeah I, I i think the thing that i like about marketing is specifically working you know with the small businesses here with the covation center has been 
uh, the teaching aspect of using marketing as a tool for teaching uh, and helping others. I mean, to me, that's what I'm, I think I would be most passionate about in this, you know, arena in terms of, of what we've been doing here at the Covation Center. Yeah, you know, we, we look at this and we, we're kind of saying the same thing we just said a minute ago, but it really is, what's your passion? What really gets you up in the morning, gets you driven, gets you wanting to do something new? It could just be the creative process. So it could be photography, it could be some other form of artwork, it could be the creative process of coding and writing code and creating user experiences and interfaces. Sure. Uh, it could be the coffee piece, working with people. Yep. Uh, if you, people in the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, why are they in it? Some of them are in it because they love to cook. They tend to be the back chefs and those sorts of folks. Some of it are in it because they love the interaction with the customers. They love going out there. They love talking to the people coming into the restaurant, making sure they have a great experience, mm -hmm. very experience driven. And you were talking about the teaching aspect. So you're sharing your ideas and innovations. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and kind of navigating, uh, again, the, the marketing landscape is changing frequently. And, and so that's where I think it, that is most interesting to me because it challenges me uh, to continue to learn and continue to, you know, get new information, but then to share that with others in a way that's, uh, you know, actionable. I like that because you, you actually went right to that next bullet, problem solving. So you're looking for that new thing. How do I figure this out? What's the challenge you're facing? Right. And so that motivates a lot of us in the businesses that we start. And that's exactly why we're here at the Covation Center, because we enjoy helping businesses figure out the challenges that they face. And the neat thing about this is every small business faces similar challenges. And so we have a kind of a warehouse of things that we can use to help you grow and start your business, start and grow your business. But everyone is also unique. And so there's always that little bit that just makes this next one as fun and as exciting as the first one we ever worked with. And, and part of that gets to that creating piece as well. And of course, there's all sorts of other reasons, all sorts of other passions you might have for starting a small business. So guess what? Why don't you leave a comment below and tell us what your passion is? Let us know what drives you if you already have a business or what's driving you to thinking about starting your own business. And while you're leaving that comment below, let's just take a minute, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Because if you've made it to week two, you know you wanna be with us all the way through week six, and you wanna see what other things we do to help small businesses grow. So hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and let us know you like what we're doing. And don't forget to hit that bell so that when our next video goes up, you'll get notified that we're ready to share starting a small business with you. As we move on, let's talk about a vision. Sure. I see you. I see you right there. There it is. <laughs> so it's your view of where you would like to be and where you would like your business to be. That's the vision. How, what's the path we're heading down? When people look at your business, when people look at your business, what do you want them to say about you and your business? So when people look at the Covation Center, I want, I know what I want to do. I want to be helping like you. I want to help. I want to teach. Yeah. I want to encourage. I want them to grow. And so when people look at us, I want them to say, that's the place where we go to have sound advice and guidance on how we can grow our business or how we can start our business or what we need to be doing or what we need to be watching out for. And I, I do want to have this cautionary tale. I said it at the end of last week and I'm going to say it again. The answer might be don't start a business. The answer might be don't start one yet. Mm -hmm. And we want to help you get to that point as well. Yeah. And one quick thing as you're analyzing to start or not start, you know, Stephen mentioned, uh, you know, certain skills that you may need in terms of um, you know, relating to other people. It's also, a, it might point you in the direction of the business idea is viable, but maybe you need a business partner. I, you know, I know there's been a number of companies that the Commission Center has worked with where there are two people that are running the business. So it's an important thing to consider. If you know the idea is a home run, but you're just not sure you have the right team together yet, maybe consider the business partner looking for someone who, who shares a similar passion, but perhaps has different skills um, that could complement your own. And in fact, there's a lot of things that go into making a decision about a partnership. So if that's something that would interest you, let us know in the comment section below because we might want to do a series on what are the issues involved with starting a partnerships and what are the things you need to do when you're going to chart the waters with that ship of partnership. 
as you move forward and we talk about your vision and we start saying what is your vision for where you want to be in the future, tied in more directly with that is the idea of setting goals. Now, there's two sets of goals here and we have them identified here on the screen, but the first set, and you talked about your business, as we look at setting goals, what were some of the advice you would give? Now, we talk about one, two, and five years. What are some, some of the advice you would give a business as they look to set business goals? To make them um, concrete, I think would be the first one. Mm. Um, you know, I, my example needs refinement in terms of the concreteness of the, of the goal that you're looking uh, to accomplish. And so that, you know, that, that looks at revenue, that looks at perhaps that's, you know, staff that's going to be necessary to meet that revenue. Because with those concrete goals, you can take actionable steps in an easier way uh, to look to achieve them. You know, it starts with, if, if, say you, you want to grow you know, the, the coffee shop, for example, employees are a part of that. So built into your one, two, five year goals are going to be perhaps things like employee count and revenue generation and profit generation uh, that you can look to work at and take small steps to get to your five-year goal. I like that. So you, you say they need to be concrete. Yep. And when you talk about take small steps, they need to be something you can put into discrete bite-sized pieces to move forward. So you can lay out from the goals, you can lay out objectives and tasks. Yep. I like that. Yep. And, and you want to have that view for where you want to be and what it's going to be getting you to. So you want to have that outcome. Yes. Right. I love that. Yeah. And, and we recommend that you look at one, two, and five-year goals. So you, you know where you want to be in five years, and then you say, what, what do I have to do next year to get me moving down that path? And what do I have to do the year after that to get me down that path? And then revisit it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned coffee shops, because what you might want to do as a coffee shop, you might look at it and say, hey, I love being a coffee shop, and this is exactly what I do, and I'm here for people in the morning and the late afternoon, and so I get the before work, before school rush, and the afternoon, evening rush, and that's who I am, and that's what I'm going to cater to. Or you may, and you may look at that and say, and because of that, I'm going to be a pastry shop as well. Or you may look at it and say, you know what, we have this gap in the middle of the day. We want to be a restaurant, so we want to have coffee, and we want to have sandwiches and salads and those sorts of things. So you may look at how you want to grow your business. This comes to the other piece, have goals, and then be willing to review them and revise them every couple of years. Agreed. Be, Stay, stay on course and focus on that outcome of growing your business and be recognized for what you do. Yeah, and that's the balance between actions and analysis by paralysis. There's a fine line there between, you know, as Steve's touching on, reviewing those goals and say, hey, has the market changed? Has something changed where I need to shift my goals a little bit, but not getting stuck there and continuing to push forward. Well, and speaking of getting stuck there, <laughs> it gets to the next set of goals, which is where do you want to be? You know, I, I know one person who started a, a home healthcare business, and what he wanted out of the home healthcare business was to build a vibrant, strong business that he can step away from. And when he steps away from that business, it keeps going and allows him to retire. And so he wants to travel and see the world, or at least see our great nation. And so this business is designed to meet his goal, his personal goal of being able to do that. Uh, others of us, uh, might want to just keep doing what we're doing until we drop dead doing it. I promise not to drop dead on camera, but if it happens, I want that to be where you get the most likes for this video. But you know, we set these one, two, and five-year goals where you want to be. Maybe what you want to be is the largest marketing firm across the state of Pennsylvania or the largest marketing firm across the eastern seaboard of the United States for micro-businesses because you figured out how to make money getting a little bit and providing guidance and growth for these small businesses. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I happen to have here a picture of a gorgeous lake view with a dock. Uh, that's where my goal is, you know, sit there, uh, have, have something warm in my hand to drink and uh, enjoy the sunrises and the sunsets. That might be your goal, but you need to understand what your goals are and what your goals for your business are. And oh, by the way, if they don't match, you need to spend some time working on how to make that happen because you should be able to find a way to achieve both. It just may not be obvious to you. Right. And that's where there's different ideas. But to go back to the example, in terms of if you have a passion, say it's teaching or helping people, uh, you know, or working with people, 
there are a number of business ideas to that end. Um, so it's important to kind of, as you said, you might need to change your idea so that those two visions can align. That's awesome. Now that gets us to the three questions for this. Why am I starting a business? Be honest with yourself. And I'm going to steal this from Andy Stanley. Why am I starting a business? Really? <laughs> what is it I want out of this? And then what drives me? What's my passion? And does my passion match really the reason I'm starting my business? And then finally, what are my top three goals? Now I list three here. I say three goals on this slide. And I don't mean the one, two, and five year vision, but I mean, once you set those goals, you might have three separate goals and a one, two, and a five year set for each of those. So one of your goals might be to have, um, to, to have a bookstore. And, and to have a bookstore that's self-sustaining and profitable within two years. And your five-year goal for that bookstore might be for you to then have a second bookstore on the other side of town that you're opening up because you're growing that bookstore. Well, you might have a second goal on top of that. And that second goal might be to encourage local authors and promote local authors. And so your first year might be finding those authors and your second year might be uh, helping them find publishers. So by the fifth year, you're having a regular local author process going through. Separate goals, all for the same business, all designed to do the same thing. So really, why am I starting a business, really? What drives me? What's my passion? And then what are the top three goals for your business broken out one, two, and five years? Now, if you want, leave those in the comments below. Share some of your thoughts with this. If you're interested in reaching out to us with a little bit more and want to know how we can help you with this conversation, feel free to email us at info at covationcenter.org. We certainly are willing to talk to you about your business and find ways that we can help you as you grow your business. You can visit us at covationcenter.org. And join us next week as we take this idea, take your passion, and we start talking about what Dave talks about knowing your customers, understanding your market. Thanks for joining me, Dave. Yep. Thank you, Steve.